Okay, welcome to the next in our series of videos looking at supply and demand theory. Uh, we're focusing on the market for strawberries just as an introduction to some basic concepts. You can apply these ideas to any market, any sector. So in this video, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about supply curves, the nature of supply in the market. Our working assumption uh, is that strawberry growers are driven by the profit motive. The better the price they can get for their strawberries when sold in markets, uh, the greater the incentive they have to increase, expand production, perhaps through investment. As we'll see, when we think about supply, the essential word to bear in mind is cost. The key factors that determine market supply uh, for most products are the costs of production and also uh, the number of firms operating in the market. So again, let's go back to our XY space. We have the market price of strawberries on the on the Y axis and the quantity traded of strawberries on the X axis. And the question we often ask is what relationship would you expect between the market price of strawberries and the quantity, the volume, if you like, of strawberries uh, farmers are willing and able to bring or supply to the market? Well, usually, usually we expect a positive uh, price supply relationship. The supply curve normally slopes upwards from left to right. Supply is defined as the quantity of a product, in this case strawberries, that a producer is willing and able to supply at each price, at a given price in each particular time period. So when the price is fairly low, there'll be a quantity Q1. Perhaps if the price is higher, P2, there's a greater incentive to increase your production, in this case perhaps invest in growing some, some extra harvest of strawberries, uh, the price goes up, there's an expansion of supply. If the price was to go down, there's less profit to be made. Indeed, the price may not even cover the costs of production. So if the price was to fall to P3 from here, we would expect to move down the supply curve and that would be a contraction of supply. The law of supply states that as price rises, so businesses aim to expand their production. And this is because higher prices provide a profit incentive to expand production to meet growing demand. The key point, though, worth bearing in mind is that the supply is not necessarily the total amount sold. It really just reflects the volume of output of, in this case, strawberries that, that go to the market. If the consumers don't wish to buy the product, it will remain unsolved. We have to then bring supply and demand together to find the equilibrium market price. And we'll do that in the next video. Let's think about shifts in the supply for a particular product. So we have our supply curve as drawn with a positive price supply relationship, but the supply curve for a product can shift around. It can move around. And that curve can shift position when there is a change in one or more of what we call the conditions of supply. Let's start off with our uh, price at P1. Uh, that, uh, is, that's enough to incentivize producers to produce Q1 tons of strawberries, for example, or kilos of strawberries to the market. Now this supply curve can shift. If it shifts this way from S1 to S2, that means at a given price level, the producer can supply more to the market. For each price level, they can now supply more to the market. It must mean their costs have gone down, and we call that an increase or an outward shift of supply. Conversely, it could be the case that supply moves to the left. Something must have happened, which means the producer can't supply as many strawberries to the market at a given price suggest their costs must have gone up. We call that shift an inward shift or a decrease of supply. So the supply curve to the market at a given price can shift either to the left, an inward shift, or to the right, an outward shift. Okay, here's five examples of changes in the market. Uh, I've just shifted my diagram a little bit to the left here. So the supply can either shift from S1 to S2 to the right, an outward shift, or S1 to S3 to the left, an inward shift. And here are five changes in the market. Here's a chance for you to press that pause button and think about which way the supply curve will, will shift or will there just be a movement in the curve. 
press the pause button and then just press play when you go when you want to go through the answers together. So five changes in the market. First one is an improvement in the technology of growing strawberries. What do you think is going to happen to the curve here? Well, my answer is the curve will shift outwards to the right. Production technologies improve. You'd expect cost to go down. Maybe productivity or yields increase. So it'll be S1 to S2. What about the entry of new farmers, new producers into the market? Which way is the supply curve going to shift here? Well, I think the answer is that it'll be another outward shift. There are more producers selling to the market. So the supply of strawberries at a given price will be higher. S1 will shift to S2. Number three, uh, a poor strawberry harvest due to perhaps uh, low temperatures or excessive rainfall. What's going to happen here? Well, other things being the same, or Keteris Paribus, uh, that's going to lead to an inward shift of supply from S1 to S3 because the yield will be less than expected and therefore there'll be a shortage of uh, strawberries on the market. Two more to go. Let's see if you can get five out of five. The government subsidises growers by paying some of the cost perhaps of of irrigation schemes or perhaps paying some of the cost of installing polytunnels, for example. What's, gonna, what's that going to do to supply? Well, think about the impact on cost. If costs go up, supply shifts to the left. If producers' costs go down, supply shifts to the right. So which way is it going to go? I think the answer is an outward shift of supply. A subsidy lowers costs, causing an increase in supply. The last one is quite tricky. What did you get for this one? We're told that the market prices of blueberries and raspberries increase over an extended period. And I'm going to assume here that blueberries and raspberries are alternative crops, uh, crops that are essentially in competitive supply with, with farmers who could, could produce strawberries, but they could produce a range of crops. So which way is the supply curve going to go here? My instinct is it's going to be an inward shift of supply. Can you think why the profitability of growing raspberries, blueberries perhaps, will have increased over an extended period? Some farmers may decide to give over some land or some capital, some polytunnels, maybe replace their strawberry crop with an alternative crop, leading to a uh, uh, decrease in the supply of strawberries over time. So there we go. There's five factors that could, in theory, cause a shift in the supply curve that's our third video in the next video we're going to bring supply and demand together to think about why the market price can rise and can fall okay thank you very much indeed